Good morning. Well, we're gonna go check on Dad. He's over at the field with those scrapers already working. Um, uh, yeah, you can't see it. Brock was here briefly and got the sprayer out, started to clean it up, and then texted me and said, I got a medical call. So he's off doing that. He'll be back in a little bit to keep working on it. Okay, so we're gonna go see what Dad's up to. Uh, it's a little foggy here this morning, but it is starting to burn off and we can got enough visibility we can see a little bit. I'm gonna have Bach, Brock do some mowing on some roadsides and filter strips and stuff here this afternoon, maybe later this morning. Uh, but I wanted to wait for it to not be foggy before I set him out to do that. make around here after he gets empty better yet he's gonna stop so we're gonna jump in and ride with him so this ditch bank is mounted way up so we're pulling dirt off of there taking it back into the low ground It is hard, isn't it? Not piling up very fast. There, it's filling. That's why I think I'm going to need the chisel. Yep. And then it bites in. Once you get a bite, yep. We'll go watch him from the gator. Um, but you'll notice there's some of those weeds that I did not mow down yesterday because it was too wet to get in there. And dad is not going right through the middle of it with the pans uh, and the big tractor because he'll get stuck. So that's why we're kind of piling on the edges. He's gonna make a big mound here and then use the backhoe and kind of push it in and, and go feather it in from the edges rather than just dump it all at once. Okay, so he's making the turn. I'm gonna get turned around right behind him and we'll kind of watch as he's filling those pans up. Setting it down. doesn't have quite as uh, aggressive of a cutting edge. You can see on that back one, it's got that center section that's lower. This one doesn't have that. So it takes a little longer to start getting a good bite and filling. There, now you can see the dirt starting to pile up. Nice where we're filling here, we've got nice long runs to pull from, gives it plenty of time so you don't have to be too aggressive. Um, you can control how much it fills by how deep you set it, you know, the, the hydraulics on it. There you can see the tractor's really pulling. So we lifted the front one, now the back one goes down. And that one fills much faster. Got it, drop the front gate, and start hauling. So those are 14 yarders a piece. So there's 28 yards of dirt. If you get them both pretty full, probably that one's got 14, that one doesn't, front one. Um, it's a lot of weight. You can see where the way the tires are on that, all the weight is in front of the tires on the 
scrapers themselves, so it puts a ton of weight on the, the, the back one puts it on the scraper in front, the front scraper puts that weight on the tractor, which is why we don't any, want any extra weights on there, uh, and why you don't need any ballast, basically. Okay, well he went the other way on me this time, but now he's getting ready to dump it over here, raise the gate, and then raise the box and tip it dumps it out the bottom, you try and do it nice and smoothly, feather it out, not just dump it all at once. Doing the back one. And now he's empty. Go back, do it again. We're heading back to the farm. Okay, so I'm back here. Um, I want to go to Berkey to look at our soybeans down there and scout for aphids. And we may look at some corn and just take a look at the crops down there in general. Um, we had looked at the aphids down there a week ago. We could go tomorrow. We could go yesterday. I don't know. A week ago. And uh, there were some there, but then they were calling for rain, and it was raining while we were there, remember? And it was hot, and so... I decided to wait. Well, it's time to go back and look again. So we're going to go down there. Um, I've also got to clean up a little bit of stuff. Dad's been working on his project down there. That um, siding, you know, on the barn. Um, but he's kind of tied up with his dirt moving project here for a while. And so he's like, hey, will you just take the scaffolding and roll it inside for me so that uh, it's not sitting out front. So we're going to do that. And the other thing that he had asked me to do or it said he wanted to do, I guess. Didn't really ask me, but there's a bunch of weeds growing in the driveway down there. So we wanted to take the gator with the sprayer in it and kill some weeds. So we're gonna load this up on the trailer and take it with us. All right, I made it to Berkey. I managed to convince Anna to come with me. We've got some weeds to spray and some beans to scout, crops to scout. The big boom, 10 foot boom on the sprayer makes quick work of driveways. Well, we'll find out in a week how good of a job I did, but I think I got most of it sprayed. Time to go check some fields. We're gonna start with a couple of corn fields and then uh, look at a bean field over here. So I found my uh, corn plot that we've got down here. Anna, you spent the summer as a crop scout. What do you know? What do we see? Um, uh, well, I didn't look at corn though. Oh, she didn't scout corn. She was doing specialty crops and stuff. Um, all right, so we're gonna walk out here. We did spray fungicide on this tassel fungicide So I don't expect to see a ton of disease and I don't to be honest We've got a little bit of gray leaf spot some of that was there before we sprayed so it looks really healthy outside of that Oh Except for that. Oh No That's tar spot Not this brown spot all the little black spots speckles Yeah Oh no, this one's got it bad. It's on the lower leaves. That's not damaging yet, but I hear that stuff spreads like crazy. And uh, that's not good. So, all right, we're gonna peel an ear back. The ears look fantastic. Big, thick cob. This one's got rows, let me tell you. We've got a little bit of tip back or potentially just unpollinated kernels. Um, just starting to dent. You can see a few kernels got that little bit of a dent to them, but uh, not the majority of the ears. So, um, yeah, I'm going to break that one in half because that ear just feels huge. That's a 20 around with a pretty deep kernel. That is a very impressive ear of corn. Um, and these all look pretty fat big. This is, this is a new hybrid for me that I don't know a ton about. They use it out west quite a bit more. Uh, but we're learning about it, and man, I'm impressed. So this hybrid that I'm in now, uh, this is 110-day, 10D21, for anybody that is familiar with Golden Harvest's lineup. Um, it doesn't have super impressive ears, to be honest. I mean, that's not a bad ear. It's filled right out. It looks good. But this hybrid is known for having a very determinate fixed ear size. It doesn't flex, meaning it won't put on a bigger or smaller ear um, like some other hybrids will. It's pretty much they're all going to be the same size. And what that means for us is that we have to plant it really thick. Uh, this hybrid, they tell me don't plant it unless you're going to plant at least 36,000 per acre. Uh, for reference, our normal is 32. So um, 
Probably won't win the plot because I didn't plant it thick enough, but it's still a very good corn. This is the hybrid that I had in our uh, corn growers entry last year that went 273. This one, however, is another 110 day 10L16, and it is basically the opposite of 10D21. It's a very flexier hybrid. You can see the length on this one compared to the last one. We do a little tip back, but um, much bigger length and uh, kernel size on this, and that's where it gets its yield from. But it does not like high populations. You have to leave this one at 34,000 or less. So this one probably has a better fit on a majority of our acres. I've planted quite a bit of it. We've got some of this corn that looks absolutely phenomenal up at Waldron. So yeah, well, interesting. All right, I want to walk down and look at the real early stuff a little bit. In fact, I'm going to take this here with us because this is the fullest season one in the plot, and you can see where it's at maturity-wise, and we'll look at one of the earliest ones and see how much more uh, dented and mature it is. So now we're in the early end. This is a 99-day corn, and uh, I'll put it next to that 110. You can really see the difference in how much they're dented. This one is farther along. I don't expect to see a milk line on it yet. Break this in half, Anna. But... Um, yeah, it's maturing. I don't know. And no, well, maybe a little bit of a milk line. Nah, pretty milky yet. So what will end up happening now is once this um, uh, corn dents, it's basically the milk line, we call it, where the bottom half of the kernel is still milky and liquidy, and the top half turns into a hard, starchy content. And uh, you can kind of follow that line as it works down the kernel over the next month here until it gets to the base, and then it black layers, and that's when that plant is physiologically mature. So, Anna, break this one. I just want to look at the kernel depth difference. This looks like a really shallow kernel. Uh, give me the top half. Um, of course, the 110 day doesn't look a lot different. Yeah, uh, kernel depth and size is one of the factors in yield, and, and I was trying to compare. These both look about the same. I don't know. I, I think our corn's going to be really good. I, I do, but there are other hybrids that have deeper kernels, good or bad one way or the other uh, it's all just in each individual hybrid and how they mature so all right we're done in here okay here's a field of our soybeans we can look at all right anna how about soybeans i don't know have you had trouble with japanese beetles there has been some japanese beetles um, we do have a fair amount of holes in the leaves that's not japanese beetle feeding I don't know. it's likely grasshoppers as close as we are to the grass over there um, maybe some bean beetles. I'm looking for white mold. That's my problem this year. White mold has been. I don't see any right here. We're still pretty close to the edge. Oh, look, right there. What's that? Oh, he hid. Stink bug. Mm. Right there. That's no good. That's probably causing some of these holes. Aphids. We're here looking for aphids. Let's pull a plant up. So we're potted fairly decent on the lower end, and pods still coming at the top. They're filling out, getting some thickness to them, so that is good. Um, you finding some aphids? Don't tell me that. There's some on that leaf. There's a few there. Not horrible, though. There's a cluster of them. What do you got? Yeah. Just a couple on there. So we gotta look a little harder. This is a tarnish bug. I think it. It's a what? Tarnish bug. Tarnish bug. I don't think it's something that we've ever worried about, so I'm still not worried about it. Well, that's good. All right, we went back to the farm here. Um, Dad wants us to put the scaffolding in and clean some stuff up that he's got sitting outside from a farm project out here. I'll show you that in just a minute, but we gotta get our door open here. So you might remember the video from a couple weeks ago where I was showing you what he was doing a little bit here, but we had some doors in here that we um, didn't really use anymore, hadn't been opened in years and years. So uh, we want to put steel on the front of the barn and we decided to close those doors in before we did that. So dad put some block down to match the foundation wall, framed it in, got some windows put in there, and then he made some siding that he put on the outside just to match the thickness, even though we're just going to cover it up. And we put some windows in, trimmed them out nice. He's got one more he needs to do. Um, but yeah, this is this is nice. It's gonna get painted and then siding steel put over it. So it's what it is. But uh, we gotta put the scaffolding inside. 
Oh, I should have had Jack let me take the A to the plow day this weekend. Bummer, I forgot. All right, we're back from lunch. Got the gator loaded up. We're gonna just stop at the other fields on our way back. Soybeans. They're a little thin on the ends, compaction, especially in this corner. We park trucks over here and run this down with the grain cart. So that's why it looks bad here, but you get out in the field, they don't look too bad. They look really healthy. I don't see any white mold. I don't see any SDS. Our fungicide seems to have worked. I don't even see the leaves, the holes in the leaves like we did in that last field that we were in. So that's good. I'm trying to find the rows, get off the ends here a little bit, and we'll look for some aphids. R.I.P. Always spoke too soon, as always. See it? White mold. That one's dead. It's the only one I see right now. Well, maybe there's another one, but not too severe down here, but it is here. After we looked at the last field, I was kind of convinced myself I wasn't coming down here to spray aphids because they weren't that bad. They were there, but they weren't that bad. And then I walked out here. That leaf is loaded. 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 Oh, man. All right, let's go home and get the sprayer. Dang it, I don't want to do it. So Anna's my college intern for the day. You know what they make interns do in college? Count stuff. So we're gonna count aphids. How many did you have? Like 667. I had 908. 908 plus 667? That's 1,500 and 75. Two plants. No, that was one plant that broke in half. Oh. Yeah. Threshold's 250. Guess we should have sprayed them a week ago. Time to go get the sprayer. All right, I'm back to Waldron. Um, I don't have any insecticide. So I called our uh, chemical salesman on the way home. He is going to get me some tomorrow morning. So we're not going to spray down there today. That's fine. Um, most of the aphids that I saw there were small, and so while there is a lot of them, I don't think that they have been there very long because the vast majority of them were really tiny little aphids, and uh, I think the population has just in the last three to four days really exploded on them. Um, so it'll be fine if we get there tomorrow. It'll probably be tomorrow afternoon, but we'll get there. Uh, I'm going to go over to the field where Dad was working and see what how he's coming and let him know what I found. And uh, Brock's car is here, but I don't see him. The mower tractor is still out there, so I think he's probably over at the field too. So we'll go check in over there. Looks like Dad's got Brock driving a backhoe. I don't think he's driven a backhoe at all. Good for him. He's getting a pile of dirt here. So I think Brock, would, or the plan was to then use the backhoe and kind of push it in. Uh, to the low ground from the edges so we can kind of build it up as we go. Yeah, definitely, because it's it's too wet to just drive across it and dump it, so he's doing, doing this. And just pushing it in. It's going to take a while. We need a bulldozer. I'm going to tell Dad he needs a bulldozer. Yeah, he's making progress. I rode with him for a minute. He wants me to get our other pan. We've got a, a, a smaller single scraper, a dolly wheel scraper that he wants me to get hooked up to the 8300 so he can use that for uh, leveling stuff off because it's pretty hard to do with these big ones. So we're going to do that this afternoon. Okay, so we've got to get our uh, other scraper pan um, hooked up to the 8300. The 8300 is still hooked up to the air seeder from when we were double crop soybeans. Um, so we're going to Get that unhooked. I had to go. I wanted to go talk to Phil because I think next week Phil is planning on putting the air seeder in the shop to start going through it. And I thought, well, I'll just put it in there now if he wants me to. But he wasn't too concerned about it, so we're just gonna unhook it where it sits and uh, and, and get that pan hooked up for Dad. I think we're gonna have to take the clevis off of the 8300. We'll check that. That tractor. That scraper. All right. Um, I'm also taking the steering wheel out because. We don't need to auto steer for this, and Dad hates it when that thing is in there and he doesn't need it, so we're just gonna not use it. 
and we got to get that clevis off. Okay, that's done, and I got all the stuff out of the cab. We got the steering wheel changed. I took the monitor out. I took the control box for the air seater out, so the cab is relatively cleaned. Chances of hydraulic line blow as soon as I try one. Yeah, negative. That's good. I think I got to reverse them. This one's only got one uh, one hydraulic remote outlet, whatever you want to call it. It's um. Eh, there we go. It yeah. Go one way past center to load it, and the other way to uh, empty it. Well, I wanted to check tires and uh, grease it, and uh, whoa. Uh, I was trying to see how much is supposed to be in these tires, and they're pretty hard to read. I do see right there it says 966. Usually tires have like a week and year that they were made on them. I can't imagine those tires are from 1966, but they sort of look like it. I don't know, and I don't know how much it's supposed to be in them, so we're going to go with 50. There was 45 in it, we're gonna go with 50. And I wish I could tell you it was just that one tire that looks that bad, but it's not. That one is just as bad. This is the best looking one of the bunch. And it does say 80 PSI on it, but it is a 10 ply. The ones on the front are eight ply. So that's not a real good uh, comparison. 45, we'll go up to 60 in the back. All right, tires are checked. I greased what I could. We do have a bit of a cylinder leak there, but um, we'll live with it. So Dad started to use the backhoe to get the stuff right on the edge of the ditch and pull the bank down. Uh, they're also bringing, they brought their hydro in. They're gonna, they're gonna dip the ditch out and completely uh, clean the bottom to get us a better outlet, which is good. Um, Dad mostly wants to use this for just leveling stuff off down there at the beginning. Uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna see if we can't get a scoop on our way back up there. Let me shift down. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. Nope, wrong way. I should switch the hoses. Try not to gouge. attempt and then you carry it down dump it like that so this pan is a uh, seven yarder old Ashland and uh, those pans I use the word pan and scraper interchangeably sorry I know that's confusing but um, most people call them scrapers. We always called them pans when we were kids, so that's how I refer to them, but I try and use the word scraper because that's what everybody knows them as. But anyway, those doubles are double 14, so they are actually uh, 28 yards, so you can carry four times as much dirt in one trip with that as you can this. If I get the right angle here, thumbnail maybe? Dirt moving crew. All right, well, I'm caught up for the moment. And so I decided to come down to the house lot here and try and lay some stuff out a little bit. I've been waiting on the guy doing my leach field and septic stuff to come and lay stuff out for me so that I know exactly where they're going to be. Because i got to bury electric line from over there to this corner of the house. Uh, we've got septic coming out where that board is, is where the, the hookup for that. And that's going to come out. And I'm thinking the septic tank will sit somewhere about where these four flags are. And then for my leach field, they're going to make me put in two runs, two four runs 80 feet long times two so we're gonna go one set that way one set that way um which actually should fit pretty nicely and uh, i think we'll we'll work okay uh it's better than going 160 foot clear out there to that orange flag way out by the beans over there so that is good so i got i'm, I'm starting to figure that out because everything's got to work around that 
the electric line is going to have to cross it at some point. We've also got to figure out where a well is going to go. And I've got a couple of options. I don't know if you can see that pink flag over there is kind of one spot I'm thinking about, but I don't really like that. I would much rather put it in the front. I got a pink flag over there that is an option of where it could be. I don't know what the setbacks are off of roads and driveways and everything, but I think I'm okay there. I know it has to be 50 feet from any leach field, which that's like 65 or something to that from where I think the corner of this is going to be. Now that's all subject to change, of course, but at least I can get an idea. And then that water line's got to get trenched in and come over on this corner of the house as well. So we've got a lot of stuff that's going to come in over here. We've got a lot of lines that are going to cross or be close to each other. So it's going to have to, have to do a little planning is what I'm saying. Um, but we can manage and get that. And then the other thing I need is a propane tank and that black stub coming out of the house right in there is uh, for the gas line. So that's going to get buried that way too. I've got a couple other orange flags out there by the barn I'm debating on. My plan was just to put it on the south side of the barn where it's kind of out of the way, but that's awfully visible from the back of the house. I don't know if that matters or not. Um, I could put a little bit closer because if we're going to plant some bushes or put a little fence up or something around it anyway to hide it, what's the difference if it's clear out on the side of the barn or in front of the barn? Um, but I don't have a ton of other places that I really want to go with it. And I want to keep it out by the barn because I would like to put uh, heat in the barn someday. And so having the propane tank close to that will be huge benefit. They have been working on the house this week. Uh, we're getting electrical in. We've got outside cans put up and he's got those wired. And uh, yesterday I came down here in the middle of the afternoon and there's electric boxes everywhere. And I'm like, whoa, look at all that progress. So uh, the boxes go up fast Then he comes back and he's getting the rough and wiring done so they're he's yeah making progress i mean the getting the plugs wired the the bedrooms over here are pretty much done and he did the master bedroom and bathroom and all that stuff he's got to do the living room kitchen area yet but uh started on that too it looks like so it's a good deal yep yep wires 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 everywhere it all makes sense i'm, I'm pretty sure the uh plumber who i thought was had wrapped stuff up last week, decided to come this week too. I guess they were kind of between jobs and needed something to fill in a couple of days. So they came and got the uh, floor heat stuff all plumbed in. And holy crap, is that awesome. So we've got our, obviously our wa water heater there, the Navian. And uh, we've got all the floor heating runs. And then they plumbed in the, the copper and the different circulating pumps, the expansion tank, the, yep, all of it. It's, uh, it's all there. And plumbed up they ran some copper lines to go over here so we have uh in-floor heat in our master bathroom which is what these two lines then are and then the other set of copper goes over to there which is for the garage in-floor heat so um yeah it's, that's that's pretty awesome oh look at this i don't know if you guys can see it or not but the baling guys are baling the straw in our uh, double crop field where i planted between their windrows well that's good we can finish spraying Roundup up here then. Maybe. Maybe. Sometime. Oh, yeah. There's always something. So I'm just sitting here uh, finishing editing my video. Realized that I didn't wrap it up at all today. So we'll do it now. Um, thanks for watching today. Have a good night. Tomorrow we've got to spray beans in Berkey as soon as we get our chemical. Um, but we've also got some cool stuff going on tomorrow. There is a farm show up in Michigan in St. John's called Agro Expo that is happening today. It was today and tomorrow. And um, Anna asked me if I wanted to go. I didn't really know anything about it until she said something. And I'm like, yeah, we can do that. So her and I, first thing in the morning, are going to go up to that. It's not a real big show. I think we can see it in a matter of a couple of hours. Uh, hopefully be back by one o'clock or so, or it might be a little later. I don't know. We'll see. But um, yeah, then we can head to Berkey with the sprayer and go kill some aphids and We'll have a good day. So anyway, have a great night, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow.